Hey everyone, before we dive into this video, I wanted to let you know about the video sponsor, Cacao Games and their mobile game, Moonlight Sculptor. Based on the famous novel, The Legendary Moonlight Sculptor, this game features a ton of different things. An immersive story, a never-changing dungeon named The Chaotic Entrance, weekly PvP tournaments, housing, crafting, the list goes on. They even just had their first update, which added a massive 150 floor dungeon, a new party dungeon, new raids, guild hideouts, just a ton of fun stuff, and there's definitely a lot more to come. My favorite thing is actually the ability to grind resources while you sleep with offline mode. I always said that if I could game while I sleep, I would, and now I can. Most importantly, the game is free to play, so check the link in the description to download it and try it out now. You can also join their community on Twitter or Discord, and I'll include links to that in the description as well. Doing this supports the channel and of course supports the sponsor as well. With that, let's get to the video. Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, I want to look back on Shadowbringers and its resistance weapon questline. I really want to do this with a lot of features for Shadowbringers because I always think it's interesting to see how it went and what we could learn for future iterations of quest lines that we know they're likely to repeat when it comes to the follow-up expansions. And in this case, every expansion we get a do-it-yourself weapon that by the end of the expansion is best in slot. There has been a lot of mixed opinions about each and every one of these quest lines, and I want to take a look at the Shadowbringers one and see what I feel the dev team has learned and adjustments I'd like to see them make for the future quest lines like this one. First of all, I want to talk about the actual release window of the weapon series. Now, every weapon questline other than the Anima weapon in Heavensward has begun in the .2x series. We're not including the original 2.0 relic because that was mostly a leftover from 1.0. I actually think that's too late in the expansion cycle. Now I know why they do it, the Anima weapon did run into some issues with balance because it released in a .15 patch, but there were other issues that led to that that I don't think they would repeat if they managed to get this questline out a little bit earlier than we have been seeing in most of the expansions. Just having that earlier goal that offers more gameplay incentive closer to the initial launch window of the expansion I think is something they should look towards doing in 6.x, so I'd rather have the weapon in 6.15 instead of 6.25. Now, the thing I do want to talk about most, though, are the individual steps. Now, the first step of this weapon was by far the easiest step we've ever had. Do a solo instance, get your first starting weapon, a thousand more tomes for another. In retrospect, I think this would have worked okay if not for the massive patch delay for patch 5.3 that followed. People were like, oh, I really wish I had a weapon to grind or multiple weapons to grind instead. I'll get the first weapon in an hour and then any weapon after that's not really going to take me that much longer. Just not a lot of work, not a lot of involvement. So. I actually liked this step. I know that having an easier introductory step got a lot of people's foot in the door for the quest line as a whole. And if that first step had been a big roadblock, a lot of people might've been like, ah, you know what? I really don't wanna do it until they nerf it or I'm just not gonna do it at all. So I think using it to present a more in-depth introduction to the story and the lore around the weapon is actually a welcome thing that I hope they do going forward. Also tying into the previous comment though, I do think that's actually going to depend on what patch we actually see the weapon. I think if the first step is in a .15 patch, it can stay this way with the really easy first step. You know, we're still kind of towards the start of the expansion, a lot of people are still leveling jobs and working on other things. So just again, getting people's foot in the door, I think is a little bit better. However, I feel like if it's any later, that it's just delaying the long-term expansion goals a bit too much. So if it were to start in .25 again, perhaps you can do this, but you, I really feel like you'd need an additional step right after in the same patch. As for the thing they did with a bonus extreme trial that actually came with this concept, it was a cool idea, but it needs work from a reward structure perspective if it's not gonna be involved with the weapon quest at all. It is really tough to get people to go back and do Memoria Extreme, and there are reasons people want it, just not a lot of reasons and not enough people that make it easy enough to do in the Party Finder. Now the step after this was actually a big fumble in my book when it initially launched, and quite frankly I still look at it as a current fumble in the overall quest line. After unlocking the Bojan Southern Front, you can unlock the weapon quest and take one of two paths. The first is to go into the front itself and just kill monsters to farm memories. The other is to do a Heavensward Fates with a 100% drop rate. 
For me, the actual fumble is how much less efficient it is to farm these items inside the Southern Front overall. Now, don't get me wrong. I've farmed parties with eight people where we all go and kill different monsters around the map and we farm tons of memories and it's actually pretty quick, but that is not the average experience for most people. A lot of people are trying to level up their resistance rank at the same time, get to this skirmish, that critical engagement, and those things do not give these rewards quickly enough. So. While they are progressing multiple objectives simultaneously, it kind of sucks to just look at your friend go do Heavensward Fates for an hour and a half and see them with a finished weapon already and you're just getting your bearings inside of the Southern Front. Now fortunately, a later step does actually tackle this problem, so I think they have learned their lesson about this, but I don't think it should ever be less efficient to do things inside of the content the weapon is designed for than doing something else. That being said, having the alternative option is a winning idea. I think they dropped the ball a bit that you still need to do Save the Queen content to even get to the next step, even though they're offering you an alternative to it to work on the weapon itself. And I think that if they're going to continue to do that, that needs to be communicated a bit better. But overall, that's a small price to pay for just having options, especially if you're someone who wants to do multiple weapons. The step right after that is pretty much a smaller scale version of the previous step. You need six bitter memories and you get them from either killing monsters inside of Bozja or level 60 dungeons. This one felt a lot more balanced, especially considering that if you're working on multiple weapons, Bozja becomes a much more attractive option since you can earn both steps worth of memories simultaneously from doing the same thing. The dungeons also feel fast and efficient after the more grindy previous step. So this one I liked, it was kind of like a little victory lap for this first set of quests, but that first step, again, really hope they don't fumble that in the future. The next steps came in the .45 patch, and there were some ideas here that were good, and some that definitely weren't. After beating the Delibum Regine, a new raid they added in that patch on the normal difficulty, you can unlock the next step. Your choices, 15 Crystal Tower raids or farming memories inside of Bozja again, this time specifically from critical engagements. Upon initially releasing, this had pretty much the same problem as the first memory step. It's too inefficient to do it inside of Bozja itself. It's since been patched so that Bozja is by far the superior option, specifically Cash from Lacus Latore dropping five of the 15 items you need. You can knock out 15 of those items in a single instance as long as you win all three of the Cash from Lacus Latores that you do. Hopefully, we don't see this kind of imbalance in 6.x. It really seems like they've learned, even just looking back at this, but the fact that this released imbalance was really, really problematic for people who were working on it at the time. Then we get another one-time quest. Now, we've done a one-time quest already. The very first step was that one-time quest inside of that instance, but this one's different because it's like a one-time grindy quest that's sandwiched between a bunch of repeatable quests that you would have to do for every follow-up weapon. I really like the idea of having grindier steps be one time with repeat weapons requiring less effort overall. Makes that first weapon feel like a bit more work, like you earned it a little bit more. And then every weapon after that is a theoretical relief. We'll get to that in a minute. This middle step, however, has one downside. There's no way of doing it inside of Bojjan content, which again, I think is just a little bit weird. But the other two options, Fates in Certain Areas or 24-Man Raids, is very in spirit with these kinds of quest lines. Originally in 2.x and 3.x, these quest lines were used by the developers to repopulate older content to help newer players get through it. This accomplishes that for specific types of content in spades, and I welcome options that encourage playing through older content any day. It's also nice to just go back and visit something older that you haven't seen or done in a while, and I hope they continue to offer options that do that in the future. Then the next step is quite a divisive one. Remember when I said it should be a theoretical relief after that one-time grindy quest? Well, this quest has something to say about that. You need 15 time-worn artifacts, you earn them from Palace of the Dead, there's a chance you earn one every time you clear 10 floors, or you get them 100% of the time from Deliberum Regine Normal. This step feels a lot more like the older weapon steps. It's grindy, it's time consuming, and you need to do it for every single weapon. Now, I will say it's still less grindy than older weapons when they first released, but compared to all the other steps, this one just feels the worst to do amongst all of them, especially if your groups are doing things much, much slower. Now, Palace of the Dead can go pretty quick if you have a pre-made and you're running all the way to floor 200, which on the higher floors, you have better drop rates for the item. So you can actually finish a weapon theoretically in one run of Palace of the Dead 50 to 200. Probably won't happen, but you'll get pretty close no matter what. Now, farming 51 to 60, on the other hand, is a huge gamble in terms of time investment. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. So I'll leave that one up to you. Delubrum is consistent, 
but requires other players to put forth effort to make it fast. I try hard in all of my Delibrums, and I get them done in 25-30 minutes. It's great. A lot of random parties, though, take like 45 minutes to over an hour, and you need 15 of these, and if you're doing more than one weapon, oh, does that not feel good. This is majorly discouraging for a lot of players. It might be okay when it first releases, you know, maybe someone's like, okay, I'll do one or two, and then I'll, you know, I'll wait till they nerf it and then do it later, but this kind of step needs to be buffed or nerfed, depending on your perspective, as a future step comes out with relative haste. The fact that while I'm making this video, this step still hasn't been nerfed is beyond me. After that though, it's back on the easy train. 0.55 rolled around the final zone for Save the Queen Unlock, Zadnor, and you can do the final few steps. The first one is another grindy one that is a one-time quest. It requires items from either Zadnor skirmishes and critical engagements or normal mode eight-man raids. This is the balance that the Southern Front should have tried to accomplish. It's pretty comfortable doing this as you initially progress Zadnor, but you don't feel bad doing it the other way either. You can really pick and choose and not feel bad about how you accomplish this step. If they can achieve this kind of balance every time, 6.X and future weapons will be much smoother. And the final step was almost like a victory lap in a sense. You need 15 raw motions and they come from plenty of activities. Level 70 dungeons and heaven on high drop one each, Delibrum drops two, and Dalriata, the Zadnor raid, drops three. It's laid back, still requires some time to get, and encourages a number of different content options. The only annoying thing is that it's actually faster to do this step in Delibrum than to do the time-worn step in Delibrum. Not a fan of that. Now, I'm sure some people are wondering what I think of the actual appearance of the weapons. I actually liked a fair number of the different steps of the different weapons for all the different jobs. There's definitely a bunch that I don't like. You know, a lot of the times I'm not a big fan of books, and I feel like the best books we ever got for Glam for Summoner and Scholar came years and years ago. Red Mage, without the little bonus effects, I think looks kind of silly. But then I have things like, you know, Monk, where it looks great for me without any of the bonus effects, and then also looks okay with the bonus effects as well. White Mage, I feel like doesn't work at all without the bonus effects but works really good with the bonus effects and when i look back a lot of the older weapons i do feel the same way but i never think about seeing them without their effects because the effects actually look good off the bat i know they're thematic to what we're doing the content we're doing the lore that's that's good and all but i definitely feel like we're due we're overdue for something that's kind of just ridiculous you know what I mean? The Eureka weapons were a little tame. These weapons at time feel again a little more tame. But looking back at like the Zodiac weapons and the Anima weapons, I think we're due for another expansion of those. The absolutely batshit crazy, way too many effects weapons. I think it's time we get some of those back again. Overall though, how does this stack up? Because a lot of people started playing this expansion in Shadowbringers or maybe in Stormblood. Now, if you go back and you do a lot of the old weapon quests now from the previous expansions, they're all pretty easy. Even Eureka, which some people are pretty afraid of. I've made a video series talking about how easy it is to actually get that weapon nowadays. But man, when I think back to like the Zodiac weapon steps first releasing and the Anima weapon, the Anima weapon quest line launched the very first step was you, well, first was either a repeat of an old step from the Zodiac weapon series, which nobody liked, that could take 20, 30 hours on its own, or you could skip it if you had a finished Zodiac weapon, which was cool, but still you had to have a uh, several hundred hour weapon before you could do this skip at the time. Uh, or you needed to, if you skip that step, you went to a step that, if you did it optimally, I believe required 670 Alexander eight-man normal mode raids. 670 that was the first step they said it was a massive mistake they never want anything as grindy as that again but the follow-up steps were still pretty grindy just not that bad looking at this compared to that when people complain about steps in this one i have a hard time taking it too seriously how oh, back in my day you we needed to do over 600 alexander raids but that being said that doesn't mean that there aren't steps here that just don't feel good. And I think a big thing is looking back at those older steps. I looked forward to logging in and maybe doing one of all of my roulettes every day just to mix things up a little bit, maybe grind out a few things here, or a few things there. It feels okay to do that with some of these steps, but again, like things like the Delubrum step just don't feel good. And I think that it's okay to have something that's grindier as long as what you're doing around it feels good to the actual player. So that's the biggest thing they're gonna have a hard time accomplishing with these kind of faster steps because anything that doesn't feel like it's the same pace as everything else, people are gonna complain about. 
when it comes to these steps, and rightfully so, most likely. So, uh, curious to see how that'll pan out, but man, if you think this one's grindy, you do not want to have been around for those older days. It's... <sighs> I don't want to talk about it. All right, and with that, that's going to be a wrap for my thoughts on Shadowbringer's Resistance Weapon and how I hope that they adjust it going forward into 6.x, whatever the moon weapons or whatever they do end up being called. So anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care. <laughs>